for the victory in Christ Jesus. Father, we honor you this day and this morning. We thank you for your presence even in the midst of us right now. You said whether two or three gathered in your name, there you be in the midst. And right now we thank you for being in the very midst of us right now. And Father, we just want to glorify your name this morning. We want to honor you and adore you. We just want to exalt you today. We want to exalt you today above all things. For you are high above all things. You are the God who sits high and looks low. You are the God who is omnipresent everywhere at the same time. You are the almighty God who is omnipotent, the all-powerful God. You are the God who is omniscient, who is all-knowing. And we just honor you this morning for being who you are, the almighty God. Lord, I have to say that again. We just honor you this morning for being the almighty God. The one who holds all might in himself. Thank you for being the only one who has that power. Because when the enemy comes like a flood, you are the power, the standard, in which we run into and are saved. And we bless you and we honor you, Father. And we just thank you for giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. We thank you, Father, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, in which the whole family heaven and earth is named, that we may know what is the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of Christ's love to us, word. And we just thank you for giving us the name of Jesus, the name that's given above all other names, far above all principalities, wickedness, rulers in high places, we thank you for giving us the name of Jesus, in which you quicken us together with Christ, and you made us sit in heavenly places in him, on the right hand of the Father. And we just honor you and adore you for taking us out of the darkness and translating us into the marvelous light of the kingdom of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Now let the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, and we thank you for the peace of you, God, that surpasseth all understanding, and may it rule our hearts and be the empire of our hearts that lead us in every day and every thought and every action and every deed in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Our glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we've been talking and dealing with how to deal with opposition and there are many things to say in this topic but I'm only going to say what is given me to say nothing less nothing more we talked about the presence of the Lord and making the Lord your refuge place and making the most high your dwelling place. We talked about how Jesus prayed for us in John 17 that we will not fail, that the faith that he has given us cannot fail, and that he prayed for us that as we are in this world, that we are protected and we are guarded by the protection of Jesus. That it is Jesus who holds and sustains all things by the word of his power. And now let's continue in part three, how to deal with opposition. Uh, let's first turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Uh, How to deal with opposition, part three. This uh, subtitle is going to be called, This Battle Belongs to the Lord. This Battle Belongs to the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 
10, verse 4, and it says, uh, For the weapons of our warfare, the weapons, plural, of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now let's turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And as you are getting 2 Chronicles chapter 20, in dealing with opposition, there are divine weapons and strategies that will have God move on your behalf and will cause you to have victory in every battle. Divine strategies, divine weapons that the Almighty God gives will cause you and I to have victory in every battle in life. Why? Because God is the extraordinary strategist. Why? Because the wisdom of this world cannot even compare to the foolishness of God if there be such thing. God's wisdom is so high, Satan has no and Satan has no idea on the wisdom of God. If he knew the wisdom of God, the Bible says he wouldn't have crucified our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Just to let you know that Satan do not know God's infinite wisdom. He know touches of it. He know parts of it. Because when God created him, he created him in wisdom. He created him perfect. Until iniquity was found in his heart. He only has a glimpse of God's wisdom, but he doesn't have God's infinite wisdom. It is only the Holy Ghost who searches the mind of God, the deep hidden things of God. That's who knows God's infinite wisdom. There are strategies and weapons that gets us to the place of victory every time. Divine strategies and divine weapons that God gives Get us to the place in which God answers and says, this battle don't belong to you. It belongs to me, meaning that it belongs to the Lord. The weapons and strategies of God will cause every stronghold to fall. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not flesh and blood, but they are mighty. They are powerful. Deuteronomy's power. God's power. Through the pulling down of the strongholds. It is God's power. That's what pulled down the strongholds. It is God's power that caused strongholds to be fallen. And chains to be broken. Hearts to be mended. Lives to be put back together. Relationships to be mended. It's only God's divine strategies. That will help any man in any situation. So how do we get there? It behooves me to share how do we get there? To that place. Second Chronicles. Chapter 2. We can start reading from verse 1. I'll be reading from. Sorry not chapter 2. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I apologize. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Verse 1. After this it says. The Moabites and the Ammonites. And with them. The Meunites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Jehoshaphat, just to give you a brief background, Jehoshaphat is king of Judah. And these particular uh, nations, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Meunites, these are the nations that God did not allow 
for Israel to over, to invade while Israel came out of it, uh, the land of Egypt. And let's now look at verse 2. And it was told to Jehoshaphat that a great multitude has come against you from beyond the Dead Sea, from Edom, and behold, they are in Hazazan Tamar, which is an Gedi. A great multitude has come up against you. What do you do when a great multitude comes up against you? What do you do when oppositions come up against you? From the left, opposition is coming. From the right, opposition is coming. From your front, opposition is coming from the north. Opposition is coming from the, the, the south and the southeast and the southwest. What do you do when opposition is coming all over around you? What do you do when the noise, the, the voices are strong and loud? What do you do when these things come up against you? Let's read. Then Jehoshaphat feared and set himself determinedly as his vital need to seek the Lord. He proclaimed a fast in all of Judah. So what do you do first, and first, my first point, what do you do in opposition when a great multitude has come up against you? One of the strategies that you do is fast. Is fast. Jesus said, these things only come through fasting and praying. The disciples at one point, and the reason why Jesus said it, the disciples at one point could not cast out a dumb and deaf spirit while Jesus was on the mount during the transfiguration. And as they came down, the multitude that was around the rest of the nine disciples came and rushed Jesus and said, your disciples cannot cast out this deaf and dumb spirit. And Jesus began to walk towards the boy and asked the father, how long have you, have he been with this? And the father said, since a child. And right there, Jesus cast out the death and dumb spirit. And later on, the disciples asked, Jesus, how come we could not Cast out this deaf and dumb spirit. And Jesus replied, these things only come through fasting and praying. So the first thing you do when opposition and great multitude comes, you declare fast. Jesus told the disciples, you don't do what I do. Jesus found himself on multiple occasions leaving the disciples and going up into a mountain to pray and to fast, mm -hmm. to seek the Lord. And Jesus told him, you don't do what I do. You don't fast. You don't pray. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this, that fasting doesn't make God move. We can't make God do anything. But fasting positions you to hear from God. Fasting tear down this flesh and positions us to hear from God. And Jehoshaphat in the midst of oppositions that was coming against him, a multitude of opposition that was coming against him, he declared a fast. Amen. To hear his strategies and answers, one 
The strategy is first fast. And fasting position yourself to hear from God. Verse 3. And Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord, yearning for him with all of their desires. The whole city came together on one accord to ask the Lord for help. Even out of all the cities of Judah, it says, they came and seek the Lord. Come out of your comfort zone. Come out of your place in which you're in and seek the Lord. Come out of your comfort zone of I gotta have this particular food. Come out of your comfort zone of keep doing the same thing expecting something different. Come out of your comfort zone and do what you never did before and get in the place of God so you can position yourself to hear from God. Divine strategies give you divine answers. The second thing, point I want to bring up is seek the Lord. The Bible says, seek him while he may be found. The Bible says, seek the Lord and you will find him. The Bible says, seek him. Seek his presence. Seek his ways. Seek his counsel. All of Judah came together to seek the Lord. They had a, a, a yearning and a burning for him because they had a need that only he can give an answer to. They had a great opposition in which he was the only one that can get them out of. I love you, brother. I love you, sister, but there are things that only God himself can get you out of. My first response is not calling you. My first response is getting and seeking the Lord and finding out his ways, his counsel, his knowledge, and his understanding. For you are finite. My God is infinite. He knows all things. He is the infinite wisdom. He is the only one who knows what I need to bring me out of that situation or the strategy to stand against every opposition that comes my way. That's why I seek the Lord. That's why I seek the Lord. Because yesterday's strategy is not today's strategy. The Lord will give you strategies each, each and every time you come to him. He can give you a new strategy for every opposition. They came together to seek the Lord, to seek his counsel, his immutable counsel, his forever unchanging counsel. Counsel. They was on one accord coming together out of their comfort zone to seek the Lord. The second step in how to get an answer from the Lord is first is fasting. Second is seeking the Lord. Let's read verse four. Again, and, G and Judah gathered together and asked him and asked help from the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord, yearning for him with all of their desire. 
yearning for the Lord? Do you have a yearning for the Lord? That yearning that just, you gotta, I just gotta spend time with the Lord. That yearning that nothing else matters in life. I gotta seek my Father. I gotta seek His ways. I gotta seek, only because I wanna spend time with Him. Because I love Him so much. I just wanna spend time with Him. That yearning, that burning fire inside of you. Just want to spend time with him. Just let you know, you know what, Father? I ain't coming to ask you for nothing. I just want to spend time with you. I just want to say, I love you. I just want to say, as a matter of fact, Lord, what can I do for you today? Glory to God. You always do for me. You have done so much, and I can, ever rep I can never repay you. But what can I do for you today? What is on your heart, Lord? What is the desire of your heart? For my desire is your desire. Oh, the Bible says one thing that I desire, that I seek after, that I seek his presence. Just to say, Lord, I just love you. I love the way you love me. I love you the way you just thought about me. You, you knitted me together, my looks, my good looks, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You knitted me together, my face, my eyes, my, my spirit. You just put me ever together perfectly. Because what you create is perfect. You don't make no mistakes. God, you're not a God that make mistakes. Having that yearning for the Lord when you're seeking him. The Bible says, without faith is impossible to please him. He who comes to God must first believe that he is. And guess what? He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The word of God is true. He's a reward of them. I'm making my business that I'm part of them. He's a reward of them that diligently seek him, that consistently seek in him. Yearning for the Lord. Yearning for his, his presence. This is spend time with him. To sit at his feet. To put your head on his bosom in his presence. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, and Jehoshaphat stood up and stood in the assembly of Judah. Mm -hmm. As king, he stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Verse 6. Well, let's read verse 5 again. Hold on. Uh, and Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. So the third point I want to bring up in how to get the divine strategy and the answers from the Lord is praying. First is fasting, positioning yourself to hear from God. Second is seeking the Lord, because he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. The third thing is praying. It says, Judah, ask the Lord for help. The third thing is praying. Whenever opposition comes your way, find yourself not only fasting, not only seeking the Lord, but find yourself praying. Philippians 4 and 6 says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance, the Bible says, and in everything, by prayer and petition, your definite request, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. 
out of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. It says in Philippians 4 and 6, do not worry yourself. Do not be anxious or have anxiety for anything. But in every circumstance, and opposition is a circumstance. Lack of is a circumstance. Every circumstance, every test, every battle, every part of your life, don't be anxious, but make yourself to pray and make your petition known before God with thanksgiving. The third point is praying. Find yourself praying. Prayer is a part of asking the Lord for his help, for his strategy, for his counsel, for his wisdom, for his knowledge, for his understanding. So we see so far these three points that Jehoshaphat and Judah, the children of Israel, find themselves in to seek out the Lord. First, they proclaim the fast. Second, they seek the Lord. Third, they pray. And in the midst of praying, how did or what did Jehoshaphat say in the midst of his prayer? Let's read. So verse 5 says, Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, in the new court, and look what Jehoshaphat said in his prayer. He said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And you do not rule over all the kingdoms of this nation, of the nations? He began in his prayer to acknowledge God with the question of who he is. Are you not God in the heavens? God is God. Overall, do you not rule over all kingdoms of the nations? God is the ruler of kingdoms and nations. He said, I tear down kingdoms, I lift them up. I put up nations, I put them down. It is he who rules over all nations and kingdoms. So Jehoshaphat acknowledged who the true and living God is with the question. Are you not God in heaven? Do you not rule over the kingdoms and nations? In your hand are power and might. So when you go to God in prayer, you begin to acknowledge God of who he is. He said, your hand or power, in your hand, excuse me, or power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you. God's hand is power and might. No one can withstand him. No one is able to withstand him. If no one is able to withstand him, who can come up against him? And if no one is able to come up against him and he is in you, who can come up against you? Huh? Greater is he. Greater is he. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. If it's in his hand is power and might and he is in me, who can come up against me? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The greater 
one is in you. First of all, he is great by himself. He lives in you and therefore you are great in power and might because the greater one is in you. But he acknowledges who God is. He goes further to say in verse 7, did, did not you, our God, drive out the inhabitants of the land before your people, Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if evil comes upon us, the sword of judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you for your name and the symbol of your presence is in this house and cry out to you or cry to you in our affliction and you will hear and save us. Your sanctuary, your body belongs to the Holy Spirit. And as they built the sanctuary in the old, so you as your body is the new sanctuary in which God dwells in. And they built the sanctuary, and the fact is that if they, whoever comes against it, whether it be famine, whether it be judgment, whether it be pestilence, they're going to stand before the house, the temple in that day, and they're going to proclaim the name of the Lord and his presence, and they're going to cry out to God in affliction. And he said, they will, he will, the Father will hear them and save them. Just like us in the New Testament. When we seek out the Lord and seek out his presence, the Lord will hear us when we cry out to him. The Lord will hear you when you cry out to him, when you seek his presence. He knows your afflictions. He knows your oppositions. And he said, seek me and you will find me. He said, I am the door. And if any man come unto me, they are saved. And they can go in and out and find green pastures. All that they need. Verse 10. And now behold, the men of Ammon, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade, they came from the land of, uh, as they came from the land of Egypt, and whom they turned from and did not destroy. Verse 11, behold, they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. You know that battle, opposition, is not about you. The attack is on the God in you. The attack is on the greater one in you. Way before you were, cre way before you were thought about by mom and dad, there was a battle going on. There was a battle going on. And so when opposition comes, we always have to seek the Lord in prayer and fasting. And Jehoshaphat began to proclaim to the Lord, now because you didn't allow us to evade them, they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession. Out of that place where you have put us in. That place where you gave us the inheritance in. Verse 12. Oh, our God, will you not exercise judgment upon them? For we have no might to stand against the great company that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. When the great multitude of opposition come up upon you, what is your first response? What is your first response? Is it to be anxious and nervous and fearful? 
Or your first response is to seek the Lord. It's to pray. In this prayer, Jehoshaphat said, for we don't know what to do. While praying, you confess to the Lord, Lord, I don't know what to do in this matter. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know where to go besides your presence. Lord, I don't know what to do. When one confess unto the Lord that they don't know what to do, the Lord honors that. And forever willing to give one his counsel. The point is, some of us are too prideful to even ask for help and to say to the Lord, I don't know what to do. And this is why we find ourselves trying to come up with our own strategies, our own answers to try to answer a problem that only God's strategy can answer. So what happens is when we put our two cents in it and our own finite wisdom, we wind up causing the situation to get worse because we said something that we shouldn't have said, we did something that we shouldn't have did, and now we cause the situation to get a little bit worse. Why? Because we got carnal. We got carnal. Carnal can never be carnal. Only spiritual can defeat carnal. Only God's word, which is spirit, can only defeat carnality. Jehoshaphat confessed and said, I don't know what to do, Lord. And the thing is, he was so humble. Mind you, he's praying in front of thousands of people before Judah and Jerusalem. And he says, Lord, I don't know what to do. Can you humble yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't know what to do in this situation. I need your help. In my finite self, I can't stand against these things. I can only stand against it in your word, in your wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Apart from that, I can't stand against the multitude. And I don't know what to do. What do you do when the attacks are all around you? And you're surrounded and you don't know what to do. What do you do? You cry out to the Lord. And you confess your stuff. For the Bible says... He resisted the proud, and he gives grace to the humble. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. The Bible says, after you suffered a while, he'll establish you. He'll make you perfect. He will settle you when you confess to the Lord and you humble yourself. The Bible says that he will not despise a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And as Jehoshaphat said these things unto the Lord, verse 13, and all of Judah stood before the Lord with their children and their wives. Everybody on one accord. 
not just the assembly of the brethren, but the assembly of family. It says, Judah stood before the Lord with their children and their wives. Sometimes a strategy is teaming up with the brethren. And seeking the Lord together, fasting together, praying together, because the Bible is very clear that first, the prayers of the righteous availeth much power. Two, one could put a thousand to flight, but two could put ten thousand to flight. Glory to God. Seek the Lord. With your family, with your brethren, when the Lord said it's okay to do so. And he said, look, look what he said. He said, if, if two or more agree on anything in the earth, he said, I will back it up. Yes. Seeking the Lord. Praying. All right, and here's my point and my subject. Verse 14. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, mm -hmm. and the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. You notice the strategy? What urged the Lord to come down? You notice? They fasted, they sought the Lord, they prayed, and what was in the prayer caused the spirit of the Lord to come upon a man. Oh, we see the same thing in the New Testament when the elders was fasting and praying and the Holy Spirit came and says, separate me, Paul, and Barnabas. It's when we get together mm -hmm. and want to call and fast and seek the Lord and pray, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit comes in the midst of a group, mm -hmm. in the midst of a family. The Holy Spirit comes in the midst of us Hallelujah. to bring what is needed. Mm -hmm. Look what the Holy Spirit said. Through this young man. Verse 15. The Holy Spirit spoke to this man. And he said. Hearken. All of Judah. You inhabitants of Jerusalem. And you king of Jehoshaphat. The Holy Spirit addressed everybody in the midst of the fasting, the praying, and the seeking. He didn't leave no one out. Hawking all of Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you king Jehoshaphat. The Lord says, the Holy Spirit says to this man, the Lord says, I tell you the truth, when you fast, you can't make God do anything, but it positions you to hear from the Lord. Judah and Jerusalem positioned themselves to hear from the Lord in their request that they made unto the Lord. They positioned themselves to hear what thus says the Lord. Are you positioning yourself to hear what thus says the Lord? Because sometimes we can get so busy in doing and not hear God. In the midst of being so busy. So busy talking, so busy doing, so busy saying, and not being still to hear the voice of the Lord. Busy, 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 but not being still to hear the voice of the Lord. The Holy Spirit says to this man, 
the Spirit of the Lord says through this man, the Lord says this to you. When God gives his divine strategy, when a weapon, weapons of the Lord comes through the Holy Ghost, it is strategic and it's specific. He said, the Lord says this to you. And I say to you, standing before me and watching, the Lord says this to you today. Be not afraid or dismayed at this great multitude. Great opposition in your life. Do not be afraid or dismayed of the multitude, of the opposition or oppositions. For look what he says. The Lord says, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. I want to share with you today, the battle, the opposition do not belong to you. It belongs to God. The battle of the multitude and the opposition in your life, God is saying to you today, it don't belong to you. It belongs to him. Remove yourself from the situation. Be quiet. Stand in the presence of God without your mouth being open. Stand before the Most High God. Silent. And God, the Almighty One, has and is fighting for you. The battle don't belong to you. This battle of the multitude belongs to God because your finite self don't have the strategies that it's need to defeat the enemy, but the infinite wisdom has all strategies, all divine weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, through the pulling down of the stronghold. When God sends his weapons and when God sends his strategies, all strongholds must fall down in the name of Jesus. All strategies must fall. All strongholds must fall. All pride must fall. For when God comes with his infinite wisdom and knowledge and understanding, all opposition to God must fall down and bow down to the greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of fear must fall down when strategies and divine weapons come from God in your life. Every infirmity, sickness, and disease must fall down through the divine strategies and weapons of God in the name of Jesus. Because our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. They're mighty through God. God's mighty strategies will defeat every power of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Every power of God will break every chain that the enemy has or hold on anyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Say this battle is not mine. It belongs to the Lord. God is the extraordinary strategist. He is divine power, that dunamis power, that great mighty power. He's the one who holds all dominion and power and glory within himself. The children of Israel positioned themselves with fasting. They positioned themselves with seeking the Lord. They positioned themselves in praying. And in the prayer, they positioned themselves by acknowledging God. 
You know a strategy? Whatever opposition in your life, you go into the secret place and you acknowledge who God is and against that strategy. Oh. Oh. If fear is your opposition, you go into the most holy of holies and you lift up the name of God and say, God, first you have not given me the spirit of fear, but you have given me the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound disciplined mind. And although the spirit of fear and opposition is trying to come up against me, I lift you up because you are love. And God is love. And in him there is no darkness. And the perfect love of God cast out all fear. You begin to lift up who God is in opposition of that thing that's coming up against you. And the battle is no longer yours. It is the Lord's. If poverty trying to come up against you, is lack of trying to come up against you, you say, Father, you are the extraordinary strategist. You own a thousand, you own cattle on a thousand hills. You shall supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. As a matter of fact, you have given me every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Whatever the opposition is, you go into the most holy of holies and you begin to lift up the name of God and who God is in opposition of that thing that's coming up against you. That's a strategy. That's a weapon. That's the divine weapon that comes from the infinite wisdom of the Father given by the Holy Ghost. How to deal with opposition is the battle is not yours, it's God's. And but you have to know how to position yourself to get to that place to hear from God for him to say, the battle is not yours, it's mine. How do you do that? First, you, <clears throat> you fast, right? You fast because fasting position you to hear from God. Second, you seek the Lord. You seek his counsel, you seek his wisdom and knowledge and understanding. The third thing is pray. You're asking God for help. You're not leaning on your own understanding, but you're acknowledging him. You're taking all the anxiety out. And that in every circumstance and everything, you pray and make your petition known. And these things will position one to hear from God the strategy and the answers that they need for the multitude of opposition. As a result, once it comes, becomes God's battle, victory is already in order because God already won. Who am I talking to today? God already won. Being that the battle is not yours, it's God's, he already won. God already won. God already won. Before we came on the camera, I heard it clearly that victory is ours. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. I already have the victory. Say, I already have the victory. I already have the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We already won. God already won. So the problem is, we seek out victory as opposed to standing in victory that we already have. And that's the problem. You're seeking out something that you already have. God says the victory is already yours. Jesus clearly said, be of good courage that I already overcame this world. And because he overcame this world, I overcame this world. Why? According to Colossians, my life is hidden with Christ inside of, inside of God. 
So if my life is hidden in Christ inside of God, how he get the victory and I don't get the victory? But there's no separation here. We already won. Stop searching and seeking out victory. You already have the victory. Speak out of victory and not for victory. Stand in victory and not search out victory. Be ye victorious because God is victorious. Glory yes. to God. I just heard that. Be ye victorious because God, the Almighty One, is victorious. Stop fighting to win. Glory to God. I'm hearing you, Holy Spirit. Who are you out there fighting? You're fighting to win. You've got to prove yourself. You don't have to do that in the Lord. God already took the battle. He already won it. You don't got to prove yourself. You don't got to seek out victory. The victory is already yours. You're already in the bosom of Christ. He already said you seated in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus on the right hand of the Father. What more you want? Victory is yours. Tell yourself no more searching for victory. No more seeking for victory. I have the victory. I have the victory. I have the victory. So is Jesus in the heavens. So am I right now in this world. I have the victory. Victory belongs to me. I have the victory in Jesus' name. It belongs to me. Victory is his name. Victory is my name. My name is victory. My name is victory. Because his name is victory. God never loses. He never lost. You know, every battle that we think is coming up, it's already been defeated before the foundation of this world. Already been defeated. The dragon already have a sentence. Every demonic spirit already got their sentence. Ain't nothing new come up before the Lord. Like he get an SOS when we get in trouble. A life signal like we get in trouble. God already knew that already. He already defeated the enemy already. He already delivered you from the snout, from the, the snare of the enemy already. The snare of the father. He already prepared a way for you. He already prepared us this way, the way of escape for you. In the name of Jesus. Victory is already yours. For the battle is not yours, but it is God. And my name is Victory. So my ask you, what's your name? My name is Victory. My name is Victory. The, I hear you, Lord. The more you seek out Victory is the more you become a victim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're coming out of the place that Christ already have you in. And you're seeking out a place where Christ already have you victorious. Why are you coming out of that victorious place into a place of victim? Hmm. And being a victim. I'm victorious. Put a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. Know today. If you didn't know yesterday or a couple of hours ago, even a minute ago, if you didn't know this, now put a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. That what you didn't know yesterday, you know today. And the infinite wisdom of the Holy Ghost only made it to be so. That God already won. He is in you. You already won. And your name is Victory. Now put a smile on your face and know that all things work together for your good because you are loved by God and you are called according to his purpose. Put a smile on your face. God is one. So have I. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your powerful word and positioning ourselves to hear from you. Now, Lord, there may be somebody that's out there that's not saved. We would like to invite you to know Jesus like how we know Jesus. 
We invite you to, to have him as your savior and Lord of your life. If you watching and you want to accept him because you heard the Holy Spirit uh, in this particular word for you today, it's just a simple step. God is simple. It's just man who tries to complicate him. Just repeat after me and say, Father, I acknowledge that God has raised Jesus from the dead. First, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead and I am saved. Look how quick and simple that is. Look how quick and simple that is to know Jesus, the one who created us, to have a right relationship with the Father. Look how simple that is. And the one who, um, who may have walked away for a little bit from God, you didn't talk to him in a while, you know he loves you and he misses you. He's calling you by name. He loves you and he really misses you. Why? Because that's what love do. Love misses. Love yearns for. Love, love loves to have relationship and commune with you. The Father is waiting with open arms for you to say, Hey God, hey Dad, I know I ain't talked to you in a while, but here I am right now. And the Father is open arms with listening ears, waiting for you to talk to him because he loves you so much. And he said, listen, if you just confess with him, if you just confess your sins, that he is faithful and that he is just to forgive you of your sins, to clean you from all unrighteousness, that's all it take. That's all it take. But if you can do, if you do that, the Father receives you as if you never left. Why? Wow. Because God don't remember stuff like that. Love don't throw stuff like that back in your face. Love is what he do because love is who he is. His name is love. Glory to God. Can I say that again? His name is love. And my, my, my phrase is, love don't do that. Love don't do that. He loves you with an everlasting love. Until next time, my friends, mm -hmm. be blessed, be encouraged, and know that faith worketh by love. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen.